In the next part of our interview with Associate Professor Alex Cook, we ask him whether the daily cases in Singapore will rise again when the circuit breaker measures ease, as we have seen in other countries. Uh, on that note as well, uh, could you elaborate more on how do we know we are relaxing uh, too soon? What are the signs to look out for? Um, I think there's probably two main measures that we look at. So one is a very obvious one, looking at numbers of cases. But the second one is to look at the number of unlinked cases. So unlinked cases are an uh, indication that we may be missing infections and therefore that there's a greater pool of people infected than we're aware of. So um, those will be some of the metrics that we'll be looking out for. I think but also probably looking as we ramp up our testing capabilities, we'll be looking to see how many of our tests test positive. Mm. It sounds um, paradoxical, but the ideal case will be that you are actually testing a larger, a larger number of people who test negative than test positive. That means that you are getting a lot, not just the, the most likely cases, but also people who are potential cases um, and able to rule them out. So the best case scenario will be that we'll have a large number of tests um, and also that a lot of the tests test negative. Right. Well, Prof, when we start easing the circuit breaker measures, is it a given that the numbers will go back up? What's the range we should be prepared for? And how long should we wait before we hit the brakes again? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not a given that the case numbers will go up, but I think it is probably fairly likely. Um, mm. When we have small numbers of cases, then case management, in particular things like contact tracing, um, is much more manageable than if you have larger numbers of cases. And, and so the longer that we're able to keep it at low levels, actually the easier it is to keep it at low levels. Um, once the number of cases rises above um, the, capacity, the capacity of the, of the system to deal with it, then actually it means that we're not contact tracing enough, we're not isolating enough, um, and therefore you will expect there will be even more transmission beyond that. So in a situation like that, we have a kind of a runaway growth almost, that will be a, a, the sort of sign that we may, may, may need to move back onto another wave of circuit breaker. Um, now, it need not necessarily be the case that if we move on to circuit breaker again, that will have the same form as the first wave of circuit breaker we are, we're ending over the next few weeks. Um, this is the first time, as I know it, that Singapore has implemented such a uh, policy. And a lot of things we don't, we haven't really known what, what the effect is going to be. Um, so, um, when we move on to the second wave of circuit breaker, if we need to have such a second wave, I think we'll be able to um, tailor re the response a little bit more finely because we'll, we'll know, for example, whether school closures are effective or not. And then we can decide whether we want to include that as part of the, the next wave of circuit breaker if that becomes necessary. Mm. Now you mentioned last week that the recent figures demonstrated a growing divergence between epidemiological models and actual cases. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, that's, it's actually quite a good sign. Um, when we do models of the number of cases in foreign workers in the dorms, in the early period, we had all of the classical um, hallmarks of an exponential growth um, and uh, the models fitted perfectly quickly. And that suggests that basically it was growing almost like out of control without any mitigation efforts. Um, now what, what we've been seeing over the last few weeks is that the number of cases is consistently lower um, in reality than what the models say we think it should have been. Um, and this is, there's a couple of interpretations for how that, for what the cause for that could be. You could be pessimistic, you could say that, well, we're maybe not able to detect all the cases because of the, the lab capacity, for example. That's one reason why it might be lower. But you can also be optimistic. You can say that it looks as if, because we are um, making efforts to segregate out the workers who are infected and those who are not, that that should be bending the curve downwards, um, reducing the number of infections, potentially dragging out the duration of the epidemic. Um, uh, but that, that would be one of the explanations for why we're seeing a divergence between what the models say and then what reality says. In yesterday's uh, multi-ministry task force press conference, the Health Ministry's Director of Medical Services, Kenneth Mark, said that there was too big a price for us to pay to reach herd immunity through natural infection. Pro Professor Cook, why won't this strategy work for Singapore? It's not clear that that strategy would work for any country. Um, mm -hmm. 
that was uh, for a while. That was what the UK was um, was pursuing, um, trying to just reduce the the number of cases a little bit, um, um, try to protect the elderly a little bit, but basically to wait until the population was immune by having enough infections in the population. That's something that that could work in, for example, the influenza pandemic we had a, a decade ago. Um, but uh, I, I, I mean, the UK has already given up on that strategy, and most countries have also moved towards something that's more aligned with how WHO wants us to respond. So the, uh, the intention should still be to try to get down to close to zero cases and leave the population as susceptible as possible, um, because that means fewer people have been infected. Um, there's some brave countries, like Sweden is taking an alternative approach, where they're um, intervening with a much lighter touch. Um, I'm glad that some countries are doing that, and I'm very glad it's not Singapore that's doing that. Um, I hope Sweden is successful, but I think they may potentially be uh, a role model for what not to do during a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Now, Prof, let's uh, wrap up this interview by looking ahead, looking at Singapore's progress in the coronavirus fight. What will June 1st look like when the circuit breaker is set to lift progressively? Well, I hope very much that people don't rush out and take advantage of the newfound freedoms. Um, this would be one of the ways in, you, would, you anticipate that um, after Circuit Breaker ends, uh, we, we may see a rise in number of cases. Um, but if we can try to m minimize the amount of unnecessary contacts that we're having, minimize the amount of unnecessary going out of the home, etc., um, especially in the immediate aftermath of Circuit Breaker, I think that will be important for trying to, to mitigate any potential immediate rise in the number of cases after circuit breaker ends. Um, I mean, we've seen, um, like today, I think uh, uh, hairdressers have reopened, and one of my friends went up for getting a haircut and said there were huge queues outside. That's, um, that, that's the sort of thing that I think we would try to ideally avoid um, as we move out of the circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. Prof, uh, just as a follow-up, just to uh, clarify as well, uh, let's look at numbers. Now, in terms of numbers, uh, what do you expect the numbers will look like come uh, June 1st, for instance? Okay, the numbers of um, infections in the general community or in the foreign workers? Uh, for both, yeah. For both mm -hmm. uh, the local community as well as uh, for foreign workers. Yeah. Well, I think that it depends on whether you're looking at the local community or the foreign worker population. So for the local community, um, it seems as if we are reducing the, the reproduction number below one. Potentially with the, the remainder of the circuit breaker, with the measures being slightly lifted, um, it may mean that we might be around about the same level, just now maybe a little bit above, um, but probably not excessively so. Uh, with our foreign worker population, um, it's, it's really unclear what's going to happen over the next few weeks. Um, there's some suggestions that the epidemic is starting to come under control, um, but exactly how long those outbreaks will burn on for, I'm not clear. I really have no idea. Mm, well, thank you so much again uh, for your time, Professor Cook. Thank you very much.